Colonel, the shadow's been in the news lately. We uh, had a little bit of a dispatch last night from its, being, its use in Iraq, and it would seem to me that training shadow operators would seem to be a first and foremost responsibility for somebody, and I guess that's you. Uh, Jim, uh, actually the, uh, the system PM for the shadow system resides at PEO Aviation and uh, at Redstone Arsenal, Alabama. Uh, the way that we've gotten involved with shadow training is the National Guard Bureau came to us uh, a little over a year ago with a, a perceived need for shadow training capability. And over time, we, uh, we obviously put an RFP out on the street and had, uh, had responses. We're in the middle of that uh, contract action. And we, uh, we contracted with AAI to provide a shadow crew trainer, which is the, the device you see behind us. And uh, what we did there were certain uh, functions that we knew needed to be trained and so the shadow crew trainer goes after those training uh, training needs and gaps and uh, what we will eventually field uh, this month is device number one that will provide the shadow platoon a two ground control station operator capabilities the a role player station to perform as that command and control staff function and then a role player station that replicates the ground operations from crew chief uh, and launch capability. Now you say these devices will start uh, deployment within the month. How, uh, how big a contract is this? This first uh, contract action was for 25 systems. Uh, the first device is in government inspection this week and we will field it to, to Fort Bragg. The, uh, it's actually the, uh, the guard, but it's going to be located at Fort Bragg later this month. Obviously, uh, AAI is the shadow prime contractor in uh, Hunt Valley, Maryland. They are the uh, they develop the system. They uh, they build the system for the uh, for the Army. AAI has a training uh, office here in Orlando, and so they are the ones that have developed Shadow Crew Trainer, uh, being built here in Orlando, uh, in Research Park, and uh, being assembled. Then obviously we will uh, we'll ship it out and field it across the nation. Now, where will these units be fielded? It's going, uh, there are 25 different locations. The first is North Carolina. We've got Mississippi, Hawaii, Minnesota. Pretty much where you've got a National Guard shadow platoon, we're going to field a device. Cirrus Design's Vision SJ50 single engine personal jet offers exceptional fuel efficiency, flexible seating for up to seven, advanced avionics, and all the Cirrus safety features you expect, including the Cirrus airframe parachute system, with its detailed design, the Cirrus Vision is technologically advanced, yet engineered to be simple to fly, to allow owner pilots more lifestyle pursuits than any other personal aircraft. Learn more about the Vision SJ50 at CirrusDesign.com. My name is Major Yolanda Frazier, and I'm Assistant Program Manager for the Shadow Crew Trainer. Um, I work for PEO SRI. I'm an, what you call an acquisition officer. I'm basically the liaison person that works with corporations that build simulation devices for the United States Army. Right here behind me is the Shadow Crew Trainer, which is a training simulation device that has been um, basically built from AI Corporation for the Army soldiers, for the warfighter. And what the simulation provides um, the soldiers is basically a simulation that trains on the actual shadow system. The simulation here and what makes it unique and different from the other systems out there is that it actually trains an entire platoon. Seven soldiers can be trained on this particular device. Um, the system actually has an instructor, uh, instructor training station, operator station, two crew stations, uh, launch recovery station, as well as a role player station. So seven soldiers get trained simultaneously on the system. The impact for the shadow crew trainer is outstanding. Not only um, do soldiers get an opportunity to train in their particular um, units at their installation, but also uh, some of the shadows are going to be actually located at mob stations, where soldiers that actually mobilize um, prior to going down range will actually be able to train on the system as well. Another reason why the shadow crew trainer is so great is because it meets the need of the warfighter. And anytime you, can, you meet the need of the warfighter, you're not only providing a great asset to the soldier, but you're also going to save lives downrange. You've heard of this thing called WAS, right? The Wide Area Augmentation System lets you fly GPS glide path approaches without relying on ground-based landing aids. No VOR, no ILS, no problem. Fact is, WAS is so smart, it even knows what you're going to say next time you need it. And don't have it on board.
Where? Where? I want my watch now! I was really crying there for a second. This is the instructor operator station for the Shadow 200. Uh, basically, I have a still view display of what's going on at the aircraft. Uh, from this window here, I, ha I can monitor two stations uh, that are each controlling the aircraft. I have the uh, same view of the payload that the uh, mission payload operator is going to have. I also have the ability to inject faults. Maybe I can insert a blown fuse or have an in-flight emergency. See how the operator reacts. Uh, that's great training that we never really had before with the news rack. Um, with this, we can test proficiency of our operators, whether they're new to our unit, actually run them through scenarios they might encounter in the real world, be able to grade them and judge them off of that, and give them a printout. Uh, after we receive the printout, we can run back all the video, do an after-action review, put that in their training folder. The advantage of having the simulator is that with our real-world training, we might be in the air, we might be flying, but we can't generate some of the scenarios that we might encounter overseas. So we have a virtual environment where we can have a vehicle going down the street. Maybe it's stolen, it depends on the scenario. Basically, the creativity of your trainer allows you to determine how realistic the simulated environment is. As you can see, we have the vehicle going down the road here. I also have the ability to control the environment in which the vehicle is in. Now right now I have an operator that's tracking this vehicle as it's going down the road. I can come over here and as it's approaching an intersection, I can have artillery fire come in. That information can then be relayed to the mission commander just like it would in a battlefield situation.